Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to Breakthrough Assault uh, and our YouTube channel. Now, uh, first of all, I should probably say Happy New Year. Um, I'm recording this on the 1st of January, so I hope that 2023 brings you uh, a wealth of hobby goodness and success on the table and uh, tabletop and painting uh, table as well. So today I'm going to be showing you um, some basing techniques. Now in front of us we've got um, where one of the new uh, Battlefront Air Assault VDV platoons that came out with Red Dawn. Um, I was originally going to do a tutorial on how to paint these, uh, these guys up with their fairly distinct uh, camouflage pattern. Uh, but to be honest it's already been done and, and I don't really see the point in, in doing another painting guide when someone's only just released it you can you, you you'll be able to find some if you, if you stick them into youtube but when i posted these pictures actually what came back the most was how did i base them um so i thought well I, I'll, I'll show you it's it's you know as most things i do uh, i'm quite flattered when when you you get some nice compliments back because there's nothing i do that's particularly hard um i, I like to get my things on the table i like to get them on there fairly quickly and I find that basing is really key. Uh, frankly, I say it covers up a multitude of sins in, 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 in your painting. You might not be the best infantry painter in the world, but get some brilliant bases and, and suddenly your, your units will stand out. Now, what I've done here is I'm trying to create um, a bit of an effect. And what I wanted was to show this infantry platoon advancing to a road. Um, so in order to do that, I... Um, laid out my bases and I knew I was going to have more than one platoon so what I'm going to show you today is how to put the second platoon um, from the box set um, up against this one and how to continue that road and then how I did all the foliage and trees on the bases. So I'll get out the products that we're going to need to use and the first thing we'll do is we'll map out where and prepare for where this road is going to go. So I've now laid out my second platoon of bases and from here you can roughly see which bases are going to have a road effect on. Now of course this one here is going to be fully road. Um, this is going to have part of it in and thinking where it's going to go I think this this one here is going to escape but I'm going to have some road effect on here and all the way across in here, here, here. Now of course I need to think how wide the road is so you can kind of already imagine it's going to come up into here um, probably just scoot over the top edge of this one into here and then hit both those bases here in fact I just realized it's that's a three hole I need a two hole oh, we, we can sort that out um, so it's important to kind of visualize it and the reason you want to visualize it is you need is I would thoroughly advise that you fill in the holes in the ones that uh, are going to have roads in. Um, don't worry too much about that because you're not actually going on the ones where there's roads you're not going to be basing um, in such a traditional way. So what you want to do dig out from your collection some of these hole fillers if, if you haven't got any they normally come with the sets then just put a little bit of filler in in, in them or, or something to fill the holes up from your from uh, milliput etc. Um, I'm going to go through and all these um, areas I think are going to be covered by roads. I'm just going to glue these in. And there's my bases now with the plugs in. Now the effect we're going to be using to get that asphalt, uh, asphalt, I'm not American, I don't know how to pronounce it. Asphalt, 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 go asphalt. AK, uh, Terrain's diorama set. Really, really good. Um, you just place it on. But you really need the area to be smooth and, and that's why I've put the plugs in. I've, when I tried this, uh, although I put quite a thick amount on, as it dried it shrunk and I could see the hole so I had to put a second layer on and, and, and it wasn't such an easy finish. Um, you can get this, most model shops, um, I just found them actually on Amazon, Amazon Prime, uh, a couple of days later arrived at my door. Great stuff um, and I also use uh, uh, AK as well for my um, for, for the grass areas as well which we'll come to later. So the next step is to work out um, the top of the road. Now there's nothing really clever about this it's just sellotape and what I'm going to do I'm not going to do it live on camera because it's um, quite fiddly when you've got a 
camera and set up right next to you. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape uh, and I'm just going to continue this line. And I'm going to take the line from, I'm going to get a pointer. Yeah, I am, um, because I've got big stump, my stubby fingers. I'm going to take a line of sellotape from here. I'm going to continue it at the same angle and I'm going to draw it out. And it's going to go across the total. It's going to touch certainly this base and this base. I think it's just going to capture the edge of that base right, right on the edge there as well. So I'm going to draw the piece of tape out. And then when I pull it up, it's going to pick up these three pieces. And that's fine because once I've got those three pieces on, I'm just going to use a knife and I'm just going to cut on the joins between them and I'm going to split those bases out. And then what that's going to do is it's going to leave the top line of that road masked. So let's do that now. OK, that's the sellotape applied. So as I say, I've just used the knife here. And once I've got the sellotape on, just to go down, split it across. And actually, this one here um, didn't actually need to be filled in. That's not going to have any road in. You can just see piece of a tape line going through those two. So the second part is going to be doing exactly the same on the other side of the road. So we know the road roughly is going to sit something like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance from the white the edge there to the centre line that I've done. And then I'm going to put the same length and get the cellar tape, run it up there it's going to go somewhere along here and once again I'm just going to cut it out and what that's going to do is it's going to define the line on my bases of where all the asphalt's going to be. Okay there we have our road marked out and I actually ended up using a cocktail stick along the middle uh, markings just to help guide me when I put that sellotape down. So all in all we're going to have four five bases out of the six who are going to be touched by the road this one obviously having very minimal it's just catching the edge which is quite nice it's kind of similar to over here um, a lot of road on these three and this one will be it completely which again is quite nice just to have one which is a little bit different with the rpg team rpg team running across the road so next up we're going to start applying asphalt um, now, in order to do this, I have actually raided the cutlery drawer because uh, this fish slice is perfect for what I want to do. You need something absolutely flat. It's absolutely imperative that when you, you know, one of a better phrase, butter this uh, base, you're going to put it on, you're going to smooth it. You're going to need to make it completely, completely smooth. OK, um, I'll open up this now so you can see the inside. I'm just going to clear everything out of my my work area, apart from one of the bases, which I'll show you. On. So this one here. OK, so in this pot, you see, it's actually quite gloopy, quite malleable. But be careful because it can go everywhere. So all you're going to want to do is take your base and hold it, obviously, um, by the side, which doesn't, um, where my finger can be on the tape. Uh, I take a nice gloopy glob and I just start sticking it on. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to smooth this out. Nothing special. Now you can see when you go back over, you're going to start getting a little bit of an effect and it's going to start um, catching. Now you can deal with that. Actually a little thing I, I, I stole from another YouTube channel, and apologies, I should have brought it over first, so one second. Um, a little bit of water on your... Um, on your tool is going to help smooth this. So here we go, we're back in. I've just dipped this in a little bit of water. It just helps run it over. And as you can see, it takes a little bit 
of time and a little bit of patience. The best thing is to scrape it off. You want this nice and smooth. You know what I'm trying to do? It's just crease it up. And a fairly smooth top. I just need to bring that out to the edge as well. Okay. I'm not going to make it perfect. And as it dries, you know, it will um it will get there. Okay. Now, others may disagree. Um, I remove cellar tape uh, at this point. Um, but before that, I'm also going to wipe up the edges because you don't want any of your road down on the edges here. The reason I remove the cellar tape is while it's wet, it's obviously just going to lift and leave that nice clean line. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but my gut feeling is once it's dry, I'm going to get, um, it's going to crack if I remove it. So I'm just going to remove the cellar tape and create that nice straight line. Okay, and that's the base. It doesn't look much like much at the, uh, at the moment, but as it dries, it will create that nice asphalt effect. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of feathering on, on the edge where the, where the tape has come up. That doesn't matter at all because we're going to be putting um, some other earth effect up against it. And that itself, you know, when you look at a road on the edges, you're going to get little cracks um, and little undulation where growth is coming onto it. You know, this isn't a, a meticulous, highly maintained road. This is, you know, just little rural road they're running across. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and do all the other bases and then I'll come back and have them laid out and um, we'll go from there. OK, so here we have the road laid out. Um, I'm going to leave that to dry now. It is going to take a little bit of time. OK, you're going to need a good 24 hours. It will look dry, but trust me, it isn't. It's just tacky and if you touch it, it will go horribly wrong. Uh, so leave it to be good and dry. The next step we're then going to do is we're going to apply um, some earth kind of pumice into all the other areas, build that up on that line. And um, then, yeah, it takes a bit of time this because that all has to dry and that's going to take about a day. Uh, and from there, we're going to have our, um, our models and we're going to be able to um, dry brush up the uh, pumice. And then the fun stuff, we get to apply the foliage, we get to put the markings on the roads, etc, etc. OK. OK, so our asphalt is now dry. Uh, it's not perfect, I'll be honest. Um, I could go back and put a second layer on, but actually I quite like how the effect matches the first one. So you've got some tiny little cracks in the road. And I think that's actually fairly realistic. Um, this is going for... A, um, I think the invasion in the book kind of through California and, and into Texas, etc. You know, hot areas. And when you look at roads, you know, you, you develop these small little cracks in um, for the temperatures, etc. So I'm quite happy with it. If, if you really want to be a perfectionist, you put a second layer on, um, keep it smooth and you could get that absolutely fresh laid uh, road effect. But I'm not really going for that. So the next phase is I'm going to be going and putting some earth texture down. I think earlier on I actually said I was using AK, so, so apologies, it's actually Vallejo. It's just an earth texture acrylic. It's got a little bit of um, uh, kind of coarseness to it, um, which allows you to bring it out in dry brushing. Uh, so if I bring an example up here, a um, bit hard to see because there's quite a bit of grass on, but if you look down in this area, you can kind of see um, you, you've got like uh, uh, some coarseness in there that you can dry brush up. And it's all about creating that realistic ground cover. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it again with this, br uh, with this brush, with this uh, fish uh, slice. So I'll just get some on it. I'm going to use this one as an example because I'm also going to show you how I put the bases on. Um, now, when you're laying out, yeah, I've covered two holes. I I didn't really need to. That's not going to be too much of a drama. You can put these down in um, without being on the holes. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll also show you later on how we're going to apply figures onto the road or um, where uh, it will be you know, 
tricky without hiding the base. Hint, we're going to take the base off. And it's, it's not as big a deal as you think it is. So I'm just getting this on. Now, I've got to be careful of my road here. So I'm going to be really careful coming up to the edge here. I'm going to spread this out. And at this stage, I'm just going to put, pop that um, pop that down so I don't touch anything with it. Stick it in there. Um, I'm now going to get one of my figures. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it into here. You notice I haven't even painted it. You don't need to. We'll come back to that later. So as you can see, as I've pushed him in, it's raised up the mud around him. Now I don't want that rim. So what I do is I just get an old brush. And I just flatten that down and I bring this mud over. Try not to get any on the model. I just go around. And I, I basically just poke it in. I pile on my sex tape, but um, get that in. If you do miss any tiny bits in the middle, don't worry, because we'll just apply a little bit of brown paint later on. So I just flatten that out. Uh, and I'm just going to go around. I'm going to put the other three stands onto that base. And then the final bit, I'm just going with a brush to feather that mud up to that edge. And into here as well. And as you can see, it's just creating a bit of undulation. I'll wipe down that edge and just wipe my finger there. And just take that off. And I'm going to do that for all the platoon. I'm going to uh, get my figures, lay them out. And I'm going to base them up uh, for anywhere that isn't on uh, the asphalt area. We'll leave that to dry. Again, it's going to take about 12, 24 hours. Don't do it too quickly. Now, you'll notice I haven't really used any glue. What you find is as this dries, it, um, it shrinks and it will actually grip it. To begin with, it will be soft and squishy and you'll kind of, you'll, you'll be like a wobbly tooth and you'll go, oh, no, it's not going to work. Once it's fully dry, that model will hold. OK, um, but it will appear dry, but it will still be wet underneath and it will be wobbly. OK, right, well, I'm going to do the rest. And there we have the uh, all, all the basing applied now. So I'm going to let that dry. And as you can see, we've still got quite a few figures to go on. But I absolutely have to reiterate, make sure all of that um, ground texture is dry. Because the next step, we're going to use some sellotape again. And uh, we're going to draw these lines. And what you don't want is any of that sort of tape touching some kind of tacky um, ground texture and then ripping it back up. Uh, so step away, go work on another project, come back to this in a day, and then uh, we'll move on from there. OK, everything's now dry. And uh, just after dry, uh, the drying process, I've just uh, painted the bases as well. So... Um, just over the the kind of mud effect, I've put um, Vallejo track primer and then dry brushed on some buff over the top just to bring out um, the stones. Um, slightly darker than I've done on there. I'll be honest, I realised I used a slightly different pumice. Um, that one actually is a lighter, um, a lighter colour. It won't matter when it's all together and you've got all the foliage on. But yep, yeah, lesson: make sure um, you always use the same uh, the same basing material. Um, what we're going to do now, so we've got this on, we're going to now put these road markings on. So I want to get my white line on the edges here. Now, in order to do this, we don't need to be 100% exact. Um, you know, you're never going to have these bases completely aligned up. But what I want to do is roughly get this line into the right place. So I'm just going to take a couple of bases out of here and show you my technique for doing it. So if I take these two here, they're lined up, and I know that this um, this line, you know, it's, it's what, a couple of millimetres away from um, the mud effect. So I've got some tape here, and all I'm doing is, right, that's the edge, I'm coming forward a, a fraction, and I'm just taping that down on there 
and then I'm going to take a second piece like so I'm going to go over here um, and I'm just going to create that very fine line in there okay there's nothing too technical to this that's all it is I'm now going to get a brush I'm going to draw, draw on my white pull that um, pull that back and then I'll have my white line simple as now I'm going to go and do um, do that for all the white lines of course I've got to remember that I've now got the other edge of the road so I'll do it in reverse along here so I'll go with the other side and when it comes to doing your um, your dash lines I don't use the tape for it um, I think that's you're not going to get it lined up correctly all I do is I'm just going to place a, a little stick down over that because that gives me the orientation and then I'm just going to freehand I'm just going to move that along and I'm just going to freehand my um, my little dashes as I go okay so I'm going to go away and do that as soon as that's done that will be all the road complete and then all we have to do is add the foliage um, which is great fun I'm really looking forward to and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to get these guys onto these bases um, without uh, basically by cutting their little circular base off gluing them on um, so it looks more natural okay let's uh, go draw some uh, draw out some roads and that's the road markings now applied now the really observant among you will go well, hang on this was this was white a second ago you can thank my friend Soren for this. Um, one of the best modellers I know um, was looking at this and he said, Mark, what you need is a, is a little bit of contrast um, rather than just having all the white lines. And he showed me a picture of um, an American road, white on the edge, yellow dashes um, in the centre and said, you, you should really do that. So I listened to him and I, went, I needed to put the white down first anyway. So I just went over with um, just a plain yellow um, back over and actually I think it works I think it, it it makes that road just stand out a little bit more so fairly happy with it um, as I say unless you're you know really going for to be meticulous you're never quite going to get these to line up 100% but you know step back um, I know on the video it probably looks a bit wonkier in, in, than in reality but when you're sitting and looking at that table or, or looking at your display board you really can't it really does line up and look good um if i was to critique myself i'm not 100 percent happy with the dash lines in the center um if that's really what it use so, so i did in the end actually use tape but the, 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 it's getting those gaps and it's really hard to get those gaps because you, you've the, the even gaps between the blocks because obviously you, you've you've got the actual bases gap, creating the gap as well. So unless you're going to fully measure it, maybe I should have done so. But um, the same goes good enough for government work. So now um, what we're going to move on to is we're going to do the fun bit and we're going to apply the um, the grass. And that's going to be in three stages. You're going to put your initial flock down, uh, which we're going to put down in patches. We're going to make sure we get all around those feet. And then um, we're going to leave, just as I've done here, we're going to leave some areas uncovered. Then we're going to put down some static grass. Um, and then we're going to put down uh, some flowers, some bushes, and then some ground cover. So we kind of count that as one, as the third stage, which I call the three dimensional stage. And then a final little thing to top it off, we're going to put these little trees down as well. And at the end of that, we'll have our, um, we'll have our platoon done and, uh, We'll have our little, you know, have the, have the stand there and we'll have our little mini company. Okay, right, so we're now going to make the bases come to life with a bit of uh, foliage. Um, I'm starting with this. Uh, I think I found it on eBay. Uh, it's a very, very fine, I mean, it's a mix, it's, it's a static grass technically, it's not a flock, but it's very, very short. So when it goes down, I use it really instead of flock. If I pull this out here, you can see it's so so short that it's, it's great for that initial base. What I'm doing is I'm going to use some white glue, uh, just normal PVA, mix it with a little bit of water. I'm just doing that out of out of sight of a little pot. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do this on one base and then we'll, we'll cut to it all complete. So what I'm going to do 
is to have this in. Now, I do like to get it around the feet of the model. The reason for that is it helps hide any lingering uh, ridges from where the circular base was and helps ensure that it looks more realistic. So like if this guy here, you can still make out if you really look a bit of the edge of where that base was. So we'll just tuck this in here, anywhere where there's, it's obvious. Just up on the lip of that road, in the back there. Little spot on the end. I would break up any big uncaught areas. So I've got that now, stick that down. Um, I'm just going to move all of these across. I'm going to go in here and literally all I'm going to do is get that in my fingers, sprinkle over the base, making sure everything's covered. Oop, a little bit of spillage there. Okay. So put it back in, give it a good knock, make sure it's all going. Give it a little bit of a blow off camera. Just missed a little bit at the front there, so I'll just go back, put another little dab on him. Make sure I've caught everywhere. Okay, so that's the initial base. It's already looking pretty cool. So now I'm gonna come back again, I'm gonna water down a little bit of PVA off camera. I'm just going to come in and pick some other little areas out. And this is where that longer static grass is going to go. Sticking it in there. Again, static grass is, is great around these ridges of anywhere there was a base. And if you think there's anywhere that's got a little bit too much um, mud still showing and you don't want it, just hit it up here. With some glue. Okay, so now that's done, stick that down. Gale Force um, green static grass, great stuff. Now, I do actually have a static applicator for this, I can never actually be that bothered with it. Um, so I'm going to put this on. If I really wanted it all to stand up, I should get the static grass applicator out. But yeah, I don't fancy an electric shop tonight. I'm sure there's a joke in there about an electric... I'm sure there's a joke in there about an electric personality. But uh, there we go. Okay. A little bit of a blow. Stick that down. Okay, we're getting there now. But most people leave that there. Um, it looks fine. I mean, nobody's going to uh, look at that and go, that's a terrible base. But it's very rare that someone's walking around and there's there's nothing else. So I've just got a pack here. It's um, warpainter.net. Get it on eBay, certainly in the UK anyway. 160 mixed tough set. Um, and I like the mixed tough set because, you know, a field or somewhere you are is going to have loads of different, different things. And... I don't like all my bases to look generic. So I just dip these in PVA and I just take a couple at random out of the bag and, uh, and stick it on the base. Now, what I have done uh, on the other bases, I've tried to use a single set of colors for the flowers as if that, that's what's growing in that field. So, um, or, or by that lay-by. So I've got little white flowers so I'm just sticking those, I'm going to stick one on there, like that. Um, so I've got a little tuft, um, a little white flower, just to break that up a little bit. And now comes the final part. Um, and I only started using this recently, and it's Coarse me uh, Turf Medium Green by um, Woodland Scenics, who most people have probably come across really big in the model railway world. I'm just going to go on here. This is where I just want, it's almost like weeds have overgrown it. I'm gonna go on, get right in here. And I want it in, I want it really in patches. I can go right up those flowers. 
those edges. Don't need to overdo it too much. Again, less is more. If you don't, if you think you need more, you can add more. If you put too much on, you can't do that. So, hang on, I'm just getting some between a couple of fingers. Now, all I do, I take a little bit, put it on, and I push it in with my fingers like that. You don't need much, so don't need to overdo it. Just put a little bit on the mat, get that, stick it in there like so. And a little bit, wedge it in there. And there we go. All that, while I've done that, it's, dis it's just dislodged a little bit. So, just stick that in. Okay, it's pretty cool. So the last part we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put, make a little tree. Uh, I'll have to get some more uh, ingredients out and, and get some super glue. So I'll be back in a sec. Right, these are um, tall shrubs from Green Stuff World. It's a website uh, mainland Europe uh, ships from. And this is how it comes out of the packet. And um, you get a big glob of this. Now this is a little tall in 15 millimeter. So what I do is I collect a clump of it. I try to make a bit of a stem just by gripping it, twisting it round in my fingers a bit. And then I cut about halfway up. And that will sharpen it down and I have a nice little tight bunched base. I then want a little bit of super glue. I just stick that somewhere out of sight. I just create a little glob on it on the top of the lid. I put the base of the tree in the glob of super glue. So it's got super glue on the bottom now. I find where I want my tree. I'm going to go right in the middle of that base. And I just wedge it in, hold it for a few seconds. When I let go, I've got a tree. Oh, I've certainly got a, a tall shrub. And that's all it is. Now, I wouldn't do that on every base. Um, as you can see on the other platoon, I've just done a couple. So this actually has less grass. So I'll probably just do one. Um, but you'll see in the final kind of picture I do in a second, I'm going to use a little bit. I'm going to cut all the stem off. So I've just got the bushy part. And I'm going to use it as an actual bush just to lie on the edge of the road. So I'm now going to go and finish all these bases. And when I come back, I'll have them all laid out. And then we'll do the final step, which is attaching the remaining figures. Right, there we go. Well, that's all the bases, uh, all based up with their foliage. Uh, so all that is left to do is um, put the final guys down. Now, this is a little bit tricky uh, because unlike where the mud was, we're not going to be able to use the mud effect in order to, in essence, glue the, the troops down. So we're going to have to glue them. Now, you know, most people will say, oh, you need to pin models, you need to create the little hole, you need to have a little... Um, with a little peg on the bottom of the base and put it in. Um, but I, I don't agree with that. Uh, perhaps if you're going to use super glue, um, a friend of mine taught me that all you really need is uh, all purpose uh, adhesive. I just use a Loctite Extra Strong. I've got a little bit on a pallet just out of sight. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pair of pliers here. Um, I'm going to get as close to the base as possible. I'm just going to snip. And I'm going to go along this his, 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 uh, his leg there hold him down, clip it out. Okay, so that's given me my um, my little, little base here. Um, and then the, give it a good sanding, or oh, sorry, good filing. Just a nice metal file I've got. And I'm just, by filing it, increasing that surface area when I put the glue down, okay? So all I'm doing, sticking it in a bit of glue, just off screen, giving it nice coated. I'm not going for less is more here. I need a fair bit of glue. I'm just placing him down, holding him a few seconds. That glue takes and it's gonna hold him there. Um, this is another one. Give this a long time to dry. Once dried, go round, give a little wobble test of each model. If anything is wobbly after everything is dried, rinse and repeat, do it again. Um, and if it's still not working, add a little bit of super glue in. But as you can see on these guys here, these are rock solid on. And it's just the same. I know that one was kneeling. 
um, but if I did it on someone that's standing, as you can see down here, it comes out exactly the same. Loctite, all-purpose adhesive, extra strong on the legs, on the feet. Hold it long enough to get tacky and just take the position and then move on. I'm going to go and apply the rest of them there um, on there and then we're going to be done. And there we have it. The finished uh, product. So two platoons of BMD VDV uh, infantry. Uh, from the Red Dawn starter set, along with their little formation commander at the back. So, yeah, figures now applied, and I've just gone along as a little finishing touch. I've just painted German grey along the edge of the base where the road touches it, and I've painted uh, Saddle Brown by Vallejo uh, around the rest of the bases. Um, it just tidies it up, and it helps that road effect because it blends it together by having those edges painted as well. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. I hope it gives you a bit of inspiration for your own bases. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the road. Uh, I think it's a, a good system, whether you're playing Flames of War, whether you're playing Team Yankee. Just always remember, it's really simple. Multiple types of basing material is key. Um, next up, I'm going to be doing another two of these platoons. Um, although I can only take three, I think it's three in the formation. If I get four, then I can take the, the big aggressive uh, version as well. So I'm going to expand this kind of diorama base out. I think I'm probably going to have to come forward. Um, so kind of mirroring this way. Um, don't know quite what to do with it yet. Uh, it would obviously continue the road. I might have some burnt out, burnt out vehicle maybe and potentially split in half and split over a couple of bases, um, which then leaves, leaves you some, some room on the base as well. Or I might come out to the right over here, continue that road out, um, and then I'd have a, a grass area there. Lots of options, I'll have to ponder it a bit once um, once, once I get round to it. But for now, I'm gonna move on to finishing off my um, BMDs, and if you haven't already done so, then uh, check out our channel because I've done a painting guide for those as well. Okay, have a great, um, again, happy new year and have a good one.